I, I, I like the way where you've all sort of been separating out today's subpoenas in terms of the conduct likely under scrutiny. And, and Joyce, I want to um, focus in on Kaylee McEnany. She was perhaps in this administration the highest profile taxpayer funded propagandist for Donald Trump. This is in the letter from the committee. Former White House press secretary made multiple public statements from the White House and elsewhere about purported fraud in the November 2020 election. For example, in the first White House press conference after the election, McEnany claimed that there were, quote, very real claims of fraud that the former president's reelection campaign was pursuing and said that mail-in voting was something that, quote, we have identified as being particularly prone to fraud. At another press conference, McEnany accused Democrats of, quote, welcoming fraud and welcoming illegal voting. In addition, McEnany was reportedly present at times with the former president as he sat as he watched the January 6th attack. McEnany was a colleague of Bill Barr's and Chris Krebs and long before Bill Barr gave an interview to the AP and long before Chris Krebs gave an interview to 60 Minutes, Chris Krebs and Bill Barr were a touch away from Kaylee. I knew the White House spokesperson. You can reach anybody at the in the administration anywhere in the world. And I think it's important to understand this. When you speak for the president, you can reach the secretary of defense. You can reach the attorney. You can reach anyone you need to because you speak for the president. So the notion that she couldn't get accurate information about very real claims of fraud. I mean, Bill, Bill Barr didn't think so. She could have called him that she didn't know this was a lie. We've identified as being prone to fraud. No, nobody else in the Trump administration thought so. And the accusation that Democrats were welcoming fraud and welcoming illegal voting was nothing that Chris Krebs, who said this was the most secure election in our country's history, had detected. So I wonder what sort of special scrutiny legally and through this committee Kaylee McEnany might face. So it's always important to remember that Congress has a different role here than DOJ might presumptively have. Congress can't indict anyone. Congress's mission here is a fact-finding mission, and so they'll be interested in learning all of the obvious questions that we would have here. Who told her to say this? Did she think it was true? Did she push back? There's a lot of rich information to explore with her, but ultimately hanging over her head. You know, she's a young woman. Presumably, she has uh, future stages in her career. So far, DOJ hasn't seemed to get serious about prosecutions. There hasn't been accountability for any of the people involved in the big lie. But she is young enough for this to haunt her and for the risk, the threat of criminal prosecution down the road to be very serious. If she were to decide to tell the truth, she could do a lot to, to undo the many times that she took to the podium after telling us that she would never lie to us and told bald-faced lie after bald-faced lie. Bald face lie after bald face lie is putting it kindly. Um, I want to go to another piece of, and, and you're right, this isn't a criminal investigation, so I don't know if evidence is the right word, but another data point about another one of the Trump insiders who's been subpoenaed. This one was from yesterday's batch of subpoenas. She's on the campaign side. Her name is Angela McCallum. And this is a voicemail recording of her call to try to pressure a Michigan state representative in December of 2020. Listen. My name is Angela McCallum. I'm calling from Trump campaign headquarters in Washington, D.C. Um, I know you're very busy, but I did want to personally reach out to you on behalf of the president um, as you've got an opportunity to be a crucial part of his reelection. The United States Constitution provides that the state legislators retain sole authority to designate the, the presidential electors. Tomorrow, as you might be aware, Mayor Giuliani will be presenting experts and witnesses from Michigan who will be able to show that the vote totals are fatally flawed um, and do not accurately represent the will of the voters as well as your constituents. Um, you do have the power to reclaim your authority and send a slate of electors that will support President Trump and Vice President Pence. There are state legislators across the country who are standing with the president to stop uh, this voter fraud from happening under their watch. We want to know when there is a resolution in the House to appoint electors for Trump, if the president can count on you to join in support. So, Eugene, there were um, no state legislators across the country standing with Donald Trump to stop voter fraud because there wasn't any voter fraud. Um, there is there was nothing that Rudy Giuliani ever presented in terms of experts and witnesses and witnesses from Michigan that stood muster in court. 
This was a lie. She leaves it on someone's voicemail. It's sort of a combination of, you know, coup adjacent, criminally stupid, and smoking gun. Who, who, who is this person and why does she matter to the 1 6 committee? Yeah, I mean, this is someone who obviously was going out of the way, um, according to her. Um, on behalf of President Trump to push that these people overturn a democratically a democratic election, right? That is um, the undergirds. All of this, all of this investigation is how far Donald Trump was willing to go, how far some of the people that worked for him, knew him, were in the White House, outside of the White House, were willing to go in order to overturn this election. I think that is something that, you know, you talk to, talk to people today, voters aren't talking about this that much, right? We are talking Talking about it a lot because it matters. Members of Congress are talking about it a lot because it matters. And so all this entire time, these, it seems like folks are hoping that this is going to go away, but it shouldn't because there's nothing more important than making sure that the elections that we have are, uh, people know and remember that the elections that we have are safe and secure, that widespread voter fraud is not a thing. It is not a thing that um, elections are overturned by any kind of voter fraud. You can't just flip an election because you want to, which is what Donald Trump has talked about doing and asking people to find votes. And so all of the folks that they're working to talk to paint this picture of exactly what happened. The, the issue is what happens after that, right? Is there any kind of actual legal accountability? Like was just said, Congress can't do that, right? Congress can't throw people in jail. And so you they, they are, um, after they do all of their fact-finding, it is up to the DOJ, it is up to other um, legal avenues um, for folks to handle that aspect of it. And that's what people, when I talk to that Democrats are worried about is that if there's no actual accountability, if people don't actually get in legal jeopardy because of what happened on January 6th and the months leading up to it, then, um, you know, could this happen again? That is what they're, they, they are saying to me and I think a lot of other reporters. Well, let me, let me try to respond as the only person here um, who's worked for the Republican Party. It is happening again. They've just made it easier for, what's her name? Angela to get the Michigan person to do what she wants because they've put in place um, laws in 33 states that don't just make it harder to vote. They take the Brad Raffensperger's off the playing field. It will happen again, and we know it'll happen again because they're working so hard to make it easier next time. And I hear you on, on the politics. I think the, the, the other question, even more daunting for Democrats than the politics, is where's Merrick Garland, Joyce Vance? Well, that's the question that we all want to know the answer to. Obviously, Garland has indicated that he's an institutionalist. He plans to play by the rules. And look, I think that's a good idea for this reason, if for no other. If you're going to say start the, the slow march to accountability by prosecuting Steve Bannon, steps that I firmly believe DOJ needs to take because there's no real uh, option otherwise for showing that Congress has the ability to enforce its subpoena then it's time for Merrick Garland to get on with it, assuming he's done the work he needs to do to make sure he can get a conviction. People have pointed to the fact that it only took eight days to uh, indict Rita Lavelle, the EPA administrator, the last referral from Congress to DOJ for this sort of criminal prosecution. Sure, DOJ indicted in eight days, but they also acquitted at trial. So DOJ needs to get the facts in order, it needs to get the law in order, and then it needs to go ahead and indict Steve Bannon and tell him he is not above the law. 